Hello and welcome to The Third Sector. I'm your host, Tamara Brinkman. In our society, there are three sectors, the public, the private, and the nonprofit, and it's that third sector that we are here to talk about today. Joining me on today's episode, we will have um, Howard and Russ from the Richmond Railroad Association and, uh, or excuse me, Richmond Area Railroaders. And then later in the show joining me will be Ashley Bailey from JC House. But first, I'd like to welcome my guests, Russ and Howard, to the show. Hello. Thank you Thank so you. much for coming. Thank you. You're glad welcome. to be here. Well, we are glad to have you. I am, um, I have to admit, I did not know about your all's organization until somewhat recently, and I'm super excited to learn all kinds of stuff about the Richmond Railroaders. Um, and so with that, whichever one of you wants to start, let's just... Take us through the history. When did the organization start and to where you guys are today? Go ahead, Russ. Well, the, the club was formed in 1995 by, uh, I, I'm not sure, I don't go back that far, so I'm not sure who all was involved in it. Uh, but um, I know, uh, I think the individual that led the, the uh, forming of it was Bob Sizemore. Okay. And... Um, uh, down through the years, we have uh, we've we've done several things as far as as uh, collecting historic photos, um, and we've got a of course we've got our big train layout uh, up at the uh, furniture gallery mm -hmm. on the third floor, so that the the uh, the uh, public is welcome to come up visit us. So. That's, it's quite a um, layout that you guys have there. I've seen it. I remember the first time I went, I went into that store and, and up there, and I was like, wow, this is really quite, quite an amazing setup. Um, but I had no idea that there was an organization that actually ran and was responsible for that setup. Mm -hmm. And so um, what, is, what is like the mission of your guys' organization? Well, basically, we're just uh, providing a venue for people to come up and look at the different model railroads. Mm -hmm. And we do talk about uh, some safety issues with the, the big trains, the railroad trains up there. And then we'll try to get members to come in because we do a lot of different things with uh, electrical wiring, landscaping, modeling. So there's quite a few things you can learn just coming up there and Wow. Being part of the organization. So, okay. If you're interested in those kinds of things, we're the place to go to. Well, yes, I think so. Um, now, do you all have any um, uh, touch points with the, the big actual railroad railroads in, in our area as far as that? Or is it just all the um, what's up at the Richmond Furniture Gallery? Just what's up there. What's up uh, there, okay. Years ago, we had several members that had worked for the railroads. Okay. Uh, but unfortunately, they've all passed away. So currently, we have, have none that have any kind of a background with railroads. Okay, okay. So is it mainly folks that just kind of have a passion for the, mm -hmm. the modeling part of it because yeah. that's probably more attainable? <laughs> yeah. We have a lot of uh, different scales up there. I mean, some very from the very small in scale mm -hmm. kind of locomotives to big scale G models locomotives. So depending on what you might want to do, we probably have a place that you could come up there and do some work and run your own trains, be right. a member. Okay. And uh, it's a good place to go, especially it's not gonna take up a lot of room in your living room at home. Mm -hmm. We have a place where you can do that kind of thing and have okay. some enjoyment with it. So other enthusiasts could actually come and set their their setup, assuming they have their space, and could have their trains. Yeah, they can be run their there. yeah they can run their own trains. Oh, and they how can fun. help us uh, model and make a little town or waterfall or whatever they're into. Okay, they can do a lot of different things up there with us. Okay, we'd enjoy having them. Oh well, I bet. So tell me when. Um, when did your enthusiasm for the railroads, when did that bug bite you? 
And you can each risk well, take that question, okay. you know, okay. respectively. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I would say, you know, Russ, if you want to start or Howard, whichever one of you wants to take that Great. first. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I was uh, kind of a youngster when my dad bought a regular Lionel train set. Mm -hmm. And it was just like a little train running on the floor uh, with a little control for speed and stuff like that. And uh, eventually I got a little older and was riding the bicycle a little more than I was running the trains, but I always had a deal. And finally, mm -hmm. when my kids uh, came along, I put a, down the basement, I put my own four by eight sheet up with a track, a, a simple <coughs> up and over figure eight mm -hmm. railroad down there for them to play on and work with that. Oh, how fun. And then uh, they grew up, and so <laughs> they kind of went their own way. And uh, I eventually moved back to Richmond and uh, saw that this was upstairs. So I came up there and started doing it again. So that's a little bit of my story. Okay. So it's been yeah. a lifelong journey for you from yeah. being from childhood. Quite a bit of change back and forth. Yeah, mine, pretty much about the same. Mine started back when I was four. Mm -hmm. I got my first train set uh, for Christmas, mm -hmm. and um, I have always been interested in trains. I really never got into it big time, I guess you'd say, until I was about 50. Okay. And uh, um, started, you know, I just, I, I love to go places and see the layouts go to uh, train museums around the country. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, of course I've belonged to the club for many years now and uh, uh, take, take my trains up there a lot to run them. Do you? So, so yeah, that's, it's pretty much been a lifetime with me as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So as, um, whoops, as a um, past president and former secretary and treasurer, and then um, Howard, currently you are the secretary and the treasurer, mm -hmm. what's, what's involved with your organization? Do you have regular meetings? Um, do, you, do you always meet upstairs with the, with the trains or do you gather elsewhere? Do you? Well, we meet uh, the second Monday of the month. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we always meet up at the, the uh, layout um, the, first, uh, the second Monday of the, of the month at 5 o'clock. Okay. We have our meetings. And, uh, and then, of course, we run the trains on the first and third Saturdays of the month okay. from, from noon to 4. Okay, okay. So, but, uh, yeah, we have monthly meetings. Okay. We usually have a work session on Thursdays, too. Okay. So if you happen to come up there, you can't get there on the weekend. If you come up on Thursday, we'll be glad to talk to you and show you what we're doing and oh, fun. where we're going. Okay. All yeah. right. Um, how many trains do you each own, respectively? I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I've got stuff in, I've got trains in totes here and there and... <laughs> And in boxes, uh, I, I couldn't even begin to guess. Okay. Couldn't even begin to guess. It's just a, it's just a large collection. Okay. All right. I'm kind of on the opposite end of that. I had some HO trains, but uh, I don't have any layout at home, so I just brought them down and donated them to the, uh, to our, to our your, club. To and, your club. And and yeah, we take. A lot of people have come down there and given us mm -hmm. their trains because yeah. they don't use them anymore. Or their kids are not interested in them anymore, but yeah, we, we, we take about anything we can get our hands on, actually. Okay, all right. We have all kinds of scales, too. N scale, we got the uh, S scale, H, O, O, So tell G me a little scale. bit, since I don't know anything about that, give me just the, the layman term of what that represents when you talk about those scales. The scales are set up proportionally um, uh, if, if uh, you have a, a say an N scale, uh, right off the top of my head, I don't know the proportion, but for every uh, foot of the uh, large train, uh -huh. the N gauge is like a very small percentage of that. It, it's set, they're set up proportionally 
according to what the real real scale is. Okay. So, like I say, we've we've got the scales a uh, scale at the at the uh, our layout. Okay. Telling you what the proportions are, the ratios are. Okay. But off the top of my head, I. Okay. I, I couldn't tell you what they are. Right. That's okay. Um, now you all do a little extra at Christmas time, right? Don't you decorate a little bit more with the with the way the because the furniture gallery always does a, they would do a big you know depot Christmas time and the rides and things like that. Do you get a little festive at the holidays with the trains, lights, or any of me? that kind of stuff? Doesn't matter. We we had a Santa Claus up there this uh, past Christmas. Oh, okay. We had a raffle going on. Uh, sometimes we give away, not give away, but we'll raffle off a train set. Uh huh. Uh, that kind of thing. Okay. Uh, but yeah, at Christmas time we light the place up pretty good. Oh, good. Have all the trains running at once. How fun! So we another like good people time coming up there. That's yeah. That's neat. That's I, neat. I believe the district is the the depot district is planning a one day Christmas festival this year. Okay. I'm not sure of the date it, in December, but uh, uh, of course we will be at our, at our, at our trains running mm -hmm. those and have everything set up. Right. Uh, this past year they didn't, mm -hmm. so we scheduled our own little Christmas uh, day up there. Right. And we had a very good turnout. Good. People coming from all around Richmond, uh, we had them from um, Greenwood, Indiana. We had them from up around Winchester. People okay. found out about it, and and they showed up from several different areas. Oh, fun! So, if folks were interested in either bringing their trains to you all, um, or joining your club, or just learning more about you guys, um, we have been putting some information up on the the screen and the graphics while we've been chatting, Facebook, websites, some phone numbers and so forth. Um, what's the, is it just reach out to any of those methods to connect with you all if that's what they're interested in doing? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that, that or show up work. on a Thursday, I guess. That would work. <laughs> yeah, or the first or third Saturdays. Sure. Come up there. You okay. can talk to people, see if they're interested, have them fill out a membership form and get in touch with them. Okay, well, that's yeah. good to know. And yeah. then um, how do you guys, um, we just have about a minute or so left, but um, how do you all, uh, do you fundraise in order to, you know, support your club or how does that work for you all? We, Just in pr we pretty much depend uh, rely on donations. Okay. Um, when people come up to see the dis displays, uh, we've got a couple donation boxes out, and we try our best to, uh, you know, hope people will donate because that's our only method of uh, income. And uh, because, uh, well, and we have no paid positions in the club. The club is strictly volunteer. Volunteer. Mm -hmm. So, so there is no paid. All the money goes to the upkeep and the purchasing of new equipment for the layouts. Okay. All right. Well, good. Well, I want to thank um, both of you. Um, whoops, uh, Howard Price uh -huh. and Russ Wright mm -hmm. from our Richmond Area Railroader Society. It was great for you to join us today and tell. I got to learn some things. Hopefully our viewers and you all out there in our community learned a little bit more too. Um, when we come back, Ashley Bailey from JC House will be joining us. Stay with me. Welcome back. Ashley Bailey, the executive director of JC House is joining me now. Um, Ashley, thank you so much for coming on The Third Sector. We're so happy to have you. Thank you for having me. Um, well, as I mentioned, you're the executive director for um, JC House, mm -hmm. and you're new in this role. So about how long have you um, been in the position now? So I have been executive director since January, but I okay. have been with JC House for two years now. Okay. Well, so um, take us through the history of J.C. House. When did the organization start in Wayne County um, and, uh, you know, kind of from the beginning to where it is today? Maybe it's evolved, it's evolution, or just give us a little bit of 
you know, from, from start to today. Yeah. So JC House opened in 2003. Um, we opened um, to do prevention and prosecution of child abuse. Um, since then, we have conducted 5,300 forensic interviews. We have our body safety program that we do. We have expanded that since opening to Wayne, Union, and Fayette counties. Mm -hmm. And then we do our advocacy. So we support families who come to JC House and the children that come through JC House. Also, um, we conduct forensic interviews. Mm -hmm. um, so when there has been an allegation of child abuse or neglect, um, we conduct a forensic interview. Okay. For the child. So um, take us, take the audience through a little bit. What is that process like? Can you share a little bit about what that kind of looks like um, for for a child um, and the family, maybe? Or yeah. So when there's been an allegation of abuse, um, we get a referral to do a forensic interview. So we conduct a forensic interview. Um, when the family comes to JC House, our child and family advocate meets them when they get there. Mm -hmm. The child and family advocate meets with both the child and the family to discuss needs they may have, resources they may be seeking out, and then the child and family advocate works to um, get those resources, connect the family with those resources and the right people that they need to be talking to. And then obviously the forensic interview is conducted. And then after the forensic interview, the child and family advocate continues to work with the family, continues to work with the, the multidisciplinary team to make sure that the child and the family are receiving the services that they need. Okay. And so who would be the type of agencies that you guys might be partnering with that people would be familiar um, with? So we um, partner with Department of Child Services. Mm -hmm. um, those are mainly who we conduct the forensic interviews for. And then we also partner with um, law enforcement at times. They will be on the cases as well. Mm -hmm. And then um, we partner with many different agencies um, that work in, in Wayne County mm -hmm. and surrounding counties to, um, as I mentioned, connect those families with those resources. Right. So. Um the forensic interviewing piece is obviously once that allegation has been brought forward or, or there's a, an, a, a current issue. Tell us a little bit more about the body safety program, which is a little bit more of that prevention um, or helping uh, you know, kiddos with education to, to know when things are not right and they're wrong. Yeah, so our body safety program, as I mentioned, we're in Wayne, Union, and Fayette County Elementary, so K through 12. Mm -hmm. um, the program is evidence-based. It's an evidence-based curriculum that teaches on um, child abuse. It's an education and prevention, so teaches children on what to do if something does happen to them, if something has ever happened to them before, who they need to talk to about that. Mm -hmm. And then it also, it also empowers the child, so it reminds them, you know, it's never too late to tell someone um, even if they haven't told anybody before, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and now how, how do you guys, um, how does that program work? So is it, it's through the schools, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So is that kind of a, a singular course that they would have, say, during, um, you know, a day? Is it a week out of their year? Mm -hmm. Is it a little bit every day? How does that, how does that go get, how do they get that program? How does that reach them? Yeah, so it's a two-day program. Okay. So it's two days out of their school year, um, and each day is an hour long. Mm -hmm. So we have a, an, a, a facilitator go into the classroom and presents an hour worth of curriculum to the students. There's interactive activities. There's an education piece where it's more of a lecture style. Mm -hmm. um, and then that's done two days. We try and keep the two days as close as possible. Mm -hmm. um, often there's scheduling issues, testing, right. those types of things with schools. But we try and keep the two days as close as possible possible so the younger kiddos can retain as much of the information mm -hmm. from day one going into day two and then um, after day two we send the children home with bookmarks with coloring sheets with um, activity booklets so they can continue to engage in those conversations at their home with their mm -hmm. caregivers af even after GC house leaves the school. right so let's take a look a little bit um, forward thinking what are the goals for JC house um, and you can define that timeline. It could be any, you know, for the next year. It could be the next six months. It could be our goal for the next five years. You know, what 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 are the goal? What are your goals? 
So one of our main goals we're focusing on right now is our Stewards of Children program. So the Stewards of Children program is an adult prevention program that's free of cost to community members and youth serving organizations. So what those trainings look like, are they're about two to three hours mm -hmm. and um, we host them for the community. So we have open free of cost trainings for the community in evenings. And then we also will go into youth serving organizations to deliver that training. Okay. And that, um, as I mentioned, is adult prevention education. So it piggybacks the Child Safety Matters and Teen Safety Matters Body Safety so the adults in the children's lives know what to do if a child does ever come to them and disclose. Oh, okay. Wow, that's 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 a really good um, program. I think that sounds terrific. Mm -hmm. um, certainly um, needed. Mm -hmm. uh, so, if people wanted to know more about that program or how to, you know, uh, get information on it, what what's the best way for them to do that? So we post um, on our Facebook very, very frequently. We will post when those trainings are, and then we'll also create an event on Facebook. Okay. So it'll pop up um, when the training is. And then we also have a training page on our website that you can visit okay. that will detail when those trainings are and where they're going to be hosted at. Great. And so for our viewers, we're putting graphics up for you guys, jchouse.org. There's the email. Um, and then also for their um, Facebook page, it's just um, JC House, right? Yep. Yeah. It's so just JC, JC House. House. Mm -hmm. um, and you can find their Facebook page. So if you're interested in learning more about these events um, or when they're coming, uh, you can take a look and check it, check it out there along with all the other um, uh, programs they have and the work that they're doing. Um, uh, there. Uh, so this is a question that sometimes is kind of a tough one, but what would happen if J.C. House ceased to exist in our community? So if J.C. House ceased to exist, I think we would really see a gap in the education on child abuse. Mm -hmm. So we're in those schools, we're presenting on child abuse, we're presenting on those hard topics that aren't typically covered in your typical classroom curriculums. Um, and then we would also see a gap in, with the adults, the adult education. So the adults wouldn't be receiving um, the free education that they can to keep kids safe as well in the community. Right. And what was your number at the top? Uh, I think, what was it, like 5,300 kids? Yes. Those have been, yep. So mm -hmm. that would be all those kiddos that would have never received or even going forward um, and families that, that, that wouldn't, wouldn't have your services. So, mm -hmm. yeah, important work that you guys do. Um, tell us a little bit about how your organization is governed um, uh, and, and what kind of staff that you guys have to run and do all this great work. Yes, so we are governed by our board of directors and then our board of directors is split up into two different committees. Um, one committee covers the more internal side of JC House and then the other committee um, deals with more the external, so fundraising, um, community relations, those types of things. And then our staff right now, so we have myself, I'm the executive director. We have a full-time MDT coordinator and forensic interviewer. She conducts our forensic interviews and then also coordinates our multidisciplinary team on those cases. We have our full-time child and family advocate. Mm -hmm. So as I mentioned before, she meets with the families when they come to the center. And she is also the one who conducts the um, the Stewards of Children Darkness to Light program. Mm -hmm. She conducts those trainings as well. And then we have a, another full-time forensic interviewer and her sole, um, per, her sole job at the, at the organization is to conduct forensic interviews. And then we have two staff that are on our prevention education team. Um, one staff, she is our education coordinator and facilitator, so she works with the schools on scheduling those classes. She works with the teachers, and then she also works to coordinate those stewards of children mm -hmm. um, classes. And then our education, um, or sorry, our community educator actually facilitates those body safety classes, and then she also helps to facilitate the stewards of children programs. Okay, those. okay. Um, how do you guys get funding to do the work that you do? So we receive, um, we're a 501c3 nonprofit, so um, we do are always um, receiving donations from the community. Um, we do an annual fundraiser. We'll, we do mm -hmm. an annual golf tournament fundraiser in the summertime. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also get grants from the community, um, from the foundation, United Way of Whitewater Valley, um, Reed Community Benefit, those mm -hmm. types of things. And mm -hmm. then we also receive um, government grants as well. Okay, okay. Um, 
If people want to get involved with your organization, <clears throat> like volunteer-wise, excuse me, <clears throat> what's the best way for them to do that? Is there an opportunity with the work you do being rather specialized mm -hmm. for, say, someone like me who doesn't have the you know um, technical background or mm -hmm. training? Is it possible for me to volunteer and support your organization? Definitely. So on our website, um, on the careers page, there's mm -hmm. a specific box at the bottom that talks about volunteer opportunities, volunteer needs that we have. Mm -hmm. um, there's a couple different ways that we um, usually utilize volunteers. Mm -hmm. um, so we do have two therapy dogs also that um, volunteer at oh. the center. Yes. Um, so they're there <laughs> not only for the children and families, but the staff as well. We enjoy them very I much. Bet. Um, and then, so they are a couple of our volunteers. Um, and then we're always looking for volunteers for our fundraising for our annual golf tournament, as I mentioned before, mm -hmm. and then um, also volunteers for helping out with the advocacy. So okay. um, volunteers to meet with families, to, you know, be that smiling face when they come into the center. Well, good. Mm -hmm. um, as we're coming to, uh, our, our time's already coming to a close here with just a, a less than a couple of minutes left. Um, what do you most like about what you do? I most like seeing the looks on children's face and families' faces when they leave. Um, oftentimes when children and families come to the center, the look on their face is completely different than when they leave. Mm -hmm. um, and that really, you know, keeps me moving every day, keeps the staff moving every day to see that we can be that, that positive light in their situation and help guide them as best as we can mm -hmm. through the mm -hmm. situations. Um, <clears throat> well, um, I just want to... Um, Thank you for the work that you're doing. We're, we're, we're happy that we have a JC House in our community. You do amazing work. It's important work. It's hard work, but it's very necessary. Um, and that'll take us to the time that we have for this episode today. So I want to thank my guests who were able to join me today earlier from the Richmond Railroaders um, Society, um, Howard Price and Russ Wright, and then, of course, Ashley Bailey from uh, JC House. Thank you guys for all you do for our community to help make it better. Thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing you next time on The Third Sector. Stay well.